Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax. Please excuse my voice. I've got a horrible cold right now. But yeah, we got some stuff to talk about right here. Two things in particular. Firstly, Serato DJ Pro version 3.0. That's now out of public beta. That's a full release. And secondly, there's some new Rain hardware to go with it. It's been two months since the public beta of Serato DJ Pro and Lite 3.0 dropped to much excitement from the user base. And that user base has gone in hard on beta testing. According to Serato, over 50,000 DJs took part in the program, contributing over 1 million sessions, which makes it the most popular beta in Serato's history. The reason for that is obvious, stems. In case you missed my video on the beta, here's a very brief summary. In version 3.0, you have controls to separate vocals, melody, bass and drums, muting each element as you wish. The software also includes stems effects to transition in and out of different stem combos in a smooth fashion. The stems controls can replace a pad mode on most Serato compatible hardware which features performance pads and can also be mapped to any other MIDI controller or remapped over existing controls. What was clear from the very first beta build was that the quality of the separation was very good indeed. My judgement was at the time it was clearly superior to the separation on the main competing platforms, Virtual DJ and Algorithms DJ, with fewer artefacts and clever phasing and filtering which made drums just kick harder. There is a slight twist there. In recent weeks, Atomics have released their Stems 2.0 for Virtual DJ, which from my testing now consistently produces the cleanest a cappellas in the game, often surpassing Serato's. But I still think the other elements of Serato's Stems are cleaner, and crucially, Virtual DJ's latest tech requires very specific hardware to analyse their Stems 2.0 on the fly, whereas Serato Stems, whilst demanding, can do real-time analysis on a much wider range of computers. On that topic, there were massive improvements in the CPU and memory demands of Serato stems as the beta program progressed. In the first public build, there was a massive memory leak, which would often cause crashes, and that was quickly resolved. Since that was fixed, the extra demands of stems have been, for me, perfectly manageable. You still may run into issues with older computers, but you do have the option to turn off auto stems analysis if your computer can't handle it. I now have quite a lot of my local music analysed for stems ahead of time, which you do by dragging them to the stems crate. I would still caution you about doing that for too many tracks, as the resulting stems files are typically much larger than the original files and so will take up a lot of space on your drive. But I do keep the auto analysis enabled as I play a lot of streaming tracks from BeatSource as well as local files I haven't pre-analysed and there have been zero issues doing things on the fly with my older 2019 Intel Mac or my Windows 10 laptop with the past few builds. The numbers of people using the beta clearly suggest that lots of them were using it for gigs, not just at home, and I have to be honest and admit that I was too against my own advice. If you watched me on Twitch in the past eight weeks, you will have seen it in action a lot. And I can say without hyperbole that it has changed the way I DJ. Don't get me wrong, all the stuff I said about the technology in my video about the beta still holds true. Depending on the track, soloing just the vocal does not always sound great, and sometimes it sounds pretty bad. This is just the nature of the tech. I doubt it will ever be the case that any software can get a perfect result every time. What I've started doing is changing the colour of tracks in my main library after playing them to reflect their stems results, with green for good acapellas and red for bad ones, but Serato's implementation on the whole does pass the good enough threshold for me. Because when it works, it really works. Having instant a cappella ins, outs and instrumental or dub versions of most tracks in acceptable quality is an actual game changer for me, enabling creative blends I could have never done before. And the way that you work with those stems really sits right with me too. Using pads to control them means I still retain the ability to use regular EQ on the resulting output, which I prefer, and switching to an a cappella or instrumental with the echo stems effect really helps things sound smooth as you transition. On that note, there are still a few tweaks I'd like to see made, the ability to choose the beat division of that echo would be nice, and sometimes there is a bit of a volume jump as the echo kicks in. And I'm disappointed that official supported accessory controllers like the DDJ XP2 still don't have native mappings in this full release. But on the whole, I would agree wholeheartedly that Stems is ready for prime time, and as it's now an official release, you can go and try it out and judge for yourself. Oh, and 3.0 is also now compatible with Mac OS Ventura. I'd still recommend you don't upgrade to that unless you absolutely have to for some reason, but the option is there now. Just make sure all your other software and the drivers for every piece of hardware you're ever likely to use are also compatible before you make the switch. And so we move on to the second part of this video, and again it's another worst kept secret situation from the In Music stable. Whether through official teasers or unofficial leaks, most of you will have seen some or all of the Rain 4 by this point, and it's fair to say that the online reaction has been mixed. 
Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room. The 4 does not have spinning platters. This has led to many long-time rain fans clutching their pearls for sure, but this is simply a different kind of device aimed at DJs who don't want or need those. And actually, that seems smart to me. The truth is, as much as I love spinning jogs, static platters are more popular in the market. That's just a fact. And so if Rain want to expand the number of DJs they can address with their products, it makes sense to have some static platter devices in their line. I spoke to Rain about this and they were very clear to me that they are categorically not abandoning spinning platters. So if the platter situation means that you aren't interested in the four, that's fair enough. But don't panic, Rain will have something else for you in the future, I am sure of that. Speaking of the future, that's the thing that makes this launch quite weird. The 4 won't be dropping until sometime in the first quarter of 2023, and it's not completely finished. In the week or so I've had my unit, I've been using beta firmware, and I'm back to a beta of Serato DJ Pro again. And my unit is not a final retail one either. You might spot that one of the jog displays is not completely straight, and that's because Rain disassembled mine and put it back together by hand. The factory makes those line up perfectly, of course. So I'm not even going to do a regular first look video here. I'll quickly break down what the 4 is and then show you the stuff which makes it special. Then I'll be testing it throughout the coming weeks and we'll bring you a full detailed review when it's about to hit shelves and when I have the final pricing, which I don't right now. The Rain 4 is a 4-deck controller for Serato DJ Pro and is the first device announced which has specific controls for Serato stems incorporated into it. It has the usual hallmarks of Rain's build, metal faceplates throughout, but thanks to the static platters, it isn't crazy heavy, a little over 18 pounds. This is in spite of it being pretty huge. At nearly 31 inches wide, it's bigger than the Denon DJ Prime 4, but being over 3 pounds lighter, it doesn't feel quite so unwieldy to carry around. Coming back to those platters, yes, they do look a bit like the ones on the DJ Hero controller. You can get that out of your system now, but they do actually perform very well. Speaking of someone who's generally not the biggest fan of static jogs from the InMusic stable, those on the Denon DJ devices, for example, I do think these are the company's best yet, with a well-judged amount of resistance and a responsive feel. They are around 7 inches in size, so there's plenty of space to work with. The central displays are cool too, with a lot of handy info available at a glance. On the subject of screens, one of the things which excites me most about the 4 is the OLED displays above the performance pads. Depending on the pad mode selected, these will show things like cue point times or names, beat divisions for things like loop roll, and even the names of loaded samples in the sampler. This is one of those features which I never would have thought I needed, but having used it, it now seems crazy that it doesn't appear on everything. Oh, and the unit offers split pad modes across the board, and the screens reflect those too. My biggest complaint about Rain's last all-in-one controller, the One, was the lack of any hardware effects. You can only use the software ones in Serato DJ Pro. Well, that's not an issue on the 4, as it has tons of hardware effects, all activated with our familiar paddle-style controls. There is Echo, Cyclone, Reverb, Duck Echo, Scale Down, Stutter Out, Hold Echo, Pitch Down, Rider, Riser, Recycler, Break, Backspin, Phaser, Flanger, Delay, Pumper, Roll, Matrix, Echo Out, and Beat Break, 22 in all, and each of them has various parameters to dial them into your own taste. I feel like it would be remiss of me not to point out that some of them are clearly, shall we say, inspired by effects found on certain competing products, but that doesn't mean I like them any less. The quality is great and they're all post-fader and post-crossfader. With the channel effects above the faders, we are back to mainly software effects along with a hardware filter, and they seem pretty cool. Serato clearly need to put some work into the filter roll before release, as that sounds pretty terrible right now, but there's plenty of time for that. So now let's talk stems, and as I said, this is the first piece of hardware announced that has been designed with Serato stems in mind, and so I was hoping for it to deliver something pretty special when it comes to making use of them. And let's just say... It does. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through using the stem split feature because there's lots of ways to work with stems here on the Rain 4. The stem split is the most exciting, but there are others too. Of course, you have your stems pad mode as you would on other hardware. So you can cut out the vocal, melody, bass, and drums, and you can see them on the little screens, which is super nice. Everything's on channel one at the moment. You can do the echo out for the instrumental, for the acapella, the drums echo. 
So those controls you're probably familiar with by now. If you've been playing with the beta version, you'll be familiar with those. But we also have more. So we can leave Hot Q, say, activated. And we can use the stems controls over here. So we can hit acapella, instant acapella. Instrumental, instant instrumental. Back to normal. We can also hit shift and do a cappella with the echo out of the instrumental. And likewise, we can echo out the vocal itself. So, this is all great. Like, this super accessible, really easy to use instant buttons right there. No need to change your pad mode or anything like that. You can be doing other things with the pads and go straight to the acapella. Brilliant. Love that. Okay, that's great. Then we level it up again with stem split. So I'm going to play the track. And I'm going to hit stem split. And on the Serato screen, you can see it's duplicated it across to deck three. It's in dual deck mode, so both of them, if I scratch back and forth or jump to a cue point, they both work together. But why am I doing two faders? Because it's now on two faders. Instrumentals over here. Acapellas over here. They're both fully up. Which sounds like it normally does. But of course, this opens up a load more possibilities because what can I do now? Well, I can EQ it. I can EQ the instrumental or the acapella. And of course, I can add the channel effects. Just put a flange on the vocal. While the instrumental is unaffected. Awesome, right? That's, and we can even use the domain effect. So I've got those assigned to channel one, which is, of course, the acapella. So we can echo those in and out as we like. The recycler. While the instrumental's playing away quite happily on its own. You can do the scale down. Riser. Matrix. All the other effects that are built in there as well so yeah just you know even if you don't want four decks you're going to want the four deck control on here because you're going to want to do the stem split it's just absolutely superb so when i first got my hands on this that's all i did was the scale down on the vocal And of course, what you can then do is split it as well. So if let's say we've got that dual deck mode right now. If I hit a Q or whatever or scratch, both decks go at the same time. But let's say we don't want to do that. I just hit one of the deck control buttons. And now I'm just controlling deck one again. 
but they're still split into their component parts. So we've still got instrumental here, still got vocal on channel one. So you can see, excuse that wackness, but you see what I'm saying. And then effect it out, you know? So honestly, like if you're into stems normally, yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna do it for you. And if you want to get back to normal again, just kind of hit the stem split. And, or let's say we were stuck. I've done this over here and I've ended up like this. All I have to do is hit one of these two buttons here and I'm back. Full beat is there. And if I wanted to go back to the split again, hit split again. And they're both back in play. So it, it could potentially be confusing if you're not paying attention. But I think very quickly you'll get your head around it. And as a creative tool, yeah, this takes already awesome stems, which levels it up even further. So there you go, a brief look, a very brief look at the new Rain 4. You know, I wish I could go into more detail, but as I say, this is all kind of beta in itself right now you know the firmware the software version i'm using with it even the hardware is effectively a beta version right now that i'm playing with so they will be swapping it out at some point later on for a full you know retail version but i'll be using this one in the meantime really getting to know it so by the time the full release comes around i should be able to give you a very detailed and in-depth review as regards serato dj pro and Lite version 3.0 i mean it's out now it's a full version Go get it. It honestly has changed the way I DJ. I didn't think it was. I was cynical. You know, I was one of those people that's like, yeah, this stems thing, I'm never going to be convinced by it. The thing is, it's not perfect. This technology, I don't believe, still I don't believe, will ever be entirely perfect. But my word, it's good enough. It's good enough to level up my sets in a way that I never thought was possible. I'm super into it. And I'm sure once you get playing with it, you will be too. In the comments this week, I'd love to hear from you on the subject of stems. Have you been messing with Serato stems either at home or at gigs? Have you been using stems on other platforms? And how have you found it's impacted on the way that you play? Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time. <laughs>